Hello everyone, welcome to Sphere Academy. In our last session, we have just completed the syllabus about electronic and electrical measurement and error analysis. Okay, so anyway, some small concepts also there. I will explain about those also later. Okay, so from this session, we will understand about the questions. Okay, so previous year questions majorly we are discussing. And I have told you the important concept of what they will give in the exam at that time. And anyway, here also I will just mention again, okay. So it is just like you will get more revision about these questions. So anyway, previous questions are very important for us, okay. So same model of questions they were just repeating every year, okay. You can understand that. Now see the first question. An ammeter reads up to 1 ampere. The meter resistance is 0 0.81 ohms to increase the range of meter to 10 amperes the value of required shunt is okay so it is an ammeter so they have mentioned ammeter but they have not given whether it is pmmc or moving iron anything so we just need to consider as pmmc only okay so a pmmc ammeter reads up to 1 ampere that means the meter current is nothing but 1 ampere you can understand that okay and the meter resistance they have given as rm equal to point 8 on ohms okay to increase the range of meter to 10 amperes that means we have to increase the range extend the range from 1 ampere to 10 amperes okay and what we have to do for the ammeter to extend the range what we have to do we have to connect one resistance that is shunt resistance okay in parallel with the meter we have to connect i have already given the formula okay so just diagram if you want if this is the meter we have and through the meter current is im and it, it must be connected in series with load to extend its range we have to connect one shunt resistance like this okay so through this some current also will be there and if load current is i okay so that is extended current we have to extend the range of this instrument from im to i like this okay so anyway rsh equal to rm divided by m minus 1 this is the formula we have so what is the m value here that is i divided by im okay so what is i value 10 what is im value that is 1 okay so it is 10 so just substitute here then you will get rm value is nothing but 0 0.81 divided by 10 minus 1 okay so 10 minus 1 is nothing but 9 okay so i am just giving as so 0 0.81 divided by 0 0.9 okay and not 0 0.9 it is 9 okay 9 it is okay so anyway if you just divide this okay 0 0.81 we can write down as so 0 0.81 okay so i'm just writing here just observe 0 0.81 we can write down as 0 0.09 into 0 0.09 okay that divided by 0 0.09 divided by 9 it will be okay so you can just understand this okay so rm value is nothing but 0 0.81 0 0.81 we can write down as 0. 0. 0. 0.01 0 0.09 into 0. 0.09 then if you just 9 into okay so it is just like uh, i will just make direct calculation why to do like this okay so 0. 0.81 divided by 9 we have so just divide this one with 9 only okay just 9 ones 9 0 point it is okay so 0 point point 81 we have already so then we can get one get as 9 9 it is 81 okay but 0 point 81 it is there right okay so so 0 point 0 9 you will get okay? otherwise this one only 81 into 10 power minus 2 we can write down like this divided by 9 okay so why to calculate other one 9 ones 9 9 sir. so it is 0 point 0 0.09 ohms okay so like that answer for this question is 0 0.09 okay so we can do the calculation like this or if you know if you calcy is allowed then no need of all these calculations also directly we can get okay so answer for this question is 0 0.09 and we have to get some points here that is rsh value is less than rm here every time okay to you see rm value is nothing but 0 0.81 rsh value is nothing but 0 0.09 even lesser value that means to extend the range of ammeter we have to connect one shunt resistance of very low value this is another bit okay they have not given yet they may ask like this also to extend the range of pmmc type of ammeter we have to connect options are high value of resistance in series low value of resistance in series the shunt value okay we have to connect the shunt okay so as low value of resistance in across the meter 
high value of resistance across the meter like that four options they may they may give and what we have to connect a low value of resistance it is okay so a low value of resistance across the meter we have to connect okay so like across the meter or series the meter they may give the options okay but remember for the ammeter across the meter we have to connect that to low value of resistance okay that is shunt resistance okay so the required shunt is okay so that is 0 0.09 ohms it is okay and the next question a 230 volt single phase energy meter has a constant load of 4 amperes passing through it for 6 hours at unity power factor if the meter disc makes 2 to 0 8 revolutions during this period then the meter constant is okay just a simple question it is i told you already for energy meter no need of any formula for us okay so directly energy meter constant whatever we know so based on that only we have to calculate okay so you see one thing the voltage of the load is 230 volt okay and the load current is nothing but so that is 4 amperes and the power factor is for is unity power factor and this load is connected for 6 hours simple information is there okay so first we will calculate the energy okay so what is the energy understood right so energy is nothing but voltage into current into power factor up to here it is a power okay power into time okay so generally energy we will be calculating in terms of kilowatt hours okay so let's calculate in terms of watt hours we will get now so we will calculate in kilowatt hours okay now see 230 volt into 4 amperes into power factor is unity okay and for how many how many hours it is just connected 6 hours okay 6 hours okay so this is what a complete energy but you observe one thing so here you see this when you calculate this you will be getting in terms of so you will get in terms of watt hour okay so not kilowatt hour because this voltage is in volts current is in amperes so whenever you multiply you will get watts okay not kilowatts directly so let's calculate okay 230 into 4 we will just do first okay 230 into 4 that will be 800 plus 800 plus 120 it is okay so they will get as 920 okay so this is 920 and we have to multiply with 6 okay 230 into 4 is nothing but 920 it is okay so and into 6 we have again so here so just multiply 0 6 to 12 9 into 6 okay 6 into 9 it will be 54 and this is 55 okay so 5520 it will be okay so 5520 watt hours it is okay so watt watt hours okay so let's calculate this one this is 5520 watt hours it is okay watt hours okay so but we have to calculate in kilowatt hours this okay kilowatt hours so what we will do divided by 1000 then you will get as 5.52 kilowatt hours okay so 5.52 kilowatt hours it is during this time during this time the energy meter has did 2 to 0 8 revolutions understood right so whenever this much of energy is correct this much of energy has been consumed at that time 2 to 0 8 revolutions completed so what is energy meter constant so energy meter constant is equal to so number of revolutions divided by kilowatt hours okay so kilowatt hours okay so what is the energy in kilowatt hours okay so that is what we have to give number of revolutions okay what is number of revolutions 2208 or the number of revolutions divided by the kilowatt hours okay so kilowatt hours means energy in kilowatt hours that is 5.52 okay so 5.52 okay so let's divide this one then you will get okay so correct answer let's observe what is the nearest value for this okay 5.52 and we will just multiply okay 552 we will take as 552 and do the calculation okay see in exam also the same as like this okay you will not be having any calculator so at that time we have to do same however i am doing now so this is not practice or questions or anything however i am doing the calculation so same as only okay so i am just taking as 552 into 2 i will take okay so just what is the value i will get okay so just 4 this is 10 to 10 okay so this is 11 again i will just do 2 so then 8 0 
22. So I just understood. Okay, whenever 552 into 4 it is that is 2208, and I have that only. Okay, so not practiced anything before. Just telling you. So I am just calculating what it will be easily divisible. Okay, like that. 552 into 2 is nothing but this. 552 into 4. Okay, so total 552 into 2 into 2 you will get as 2208. That means. So, whatever we have here 5.52, so 4 times it is, okay, 4 times, but 0, so we, point we have right, okay, so 0, 0, okay, so we will get as 400 revolutions per kilowatt hour it will be, okay, so energy meter constant K equal to 4, 400 revolutions per kilowatt hour, you observe one thing, this all calculations we have did already, but if you do this calculation wrong, then it is no matter right, okay. So that is why whenever in the calculations, whatever you are doing, just maybe you know the basic of calculations only, do that method, okay. Do not follow any shortcuts while doing the calculations, directly just multiply, whatever multiplications and divisions we have like this, follow the same methods only. Otherwise, you may give wrong answer because of your calculation mistakes, okay. So never do the calculation mistake. And I will tell you how to avoid calculation mistakes. So, when you are doing the calculations at that time, do not go for shortcuts anything, okay. So, whatever method you know, follow the same thing, okay. Blindly you just follow this, you will never get the wrong answer in calculations, okay. So, like that. Understood, right? So, most probably you will be getting the multiplications and divisions only. Do not go for approximations also. Just do the multiplications or divisions, whatever it is, okay. However, you used to do when you are in 5th standard, 6th standard, same as like that, you just need to do the calculations, okay. So, then you will get answers, okay. Answer for this question is 400 revolutions per kilowatt hour, okay. As we have discussed already, so there is no formula required for energy meter, okay. So, directly from this energy and number of revolutions, number of hours, based on these only, they will be asking the questions. And there are many pre, many theory bits also from energy meter. I will be discussing all those types also. Okay, so in some other questions, you will get more analysis about energy meter. Okay, and the next question is PMMC instrument normally use. Okay, so in PMMC instrument, what we are using? Okay, let's see the options: air friction damping, fluid friction damping, eddy current damping, and hysteresis current damping. Okay, four types of damping mechanisms they have given. And we have discussed already, there are damping mechanism required for every instrument because to reduce the oscillations in pointer, damping torque we need to provide for the instruments, okay. So anyway, let us see air friction, air friction damping, fluid friction damping and eddy current damping, okay. So these three we have studied. Moreover, one more type of damping mechanism is there that is nothing but our electrostatic damping, okay. So, electrostatic damping it is because we are not using electrostatic damping in our electrode, electromechanical type of instruments because it is very costly, okay. And there is no hysteresis current damping, okay. So, there is no direct hysteresis current damping. So, there is option 4 is definitely wrong for us. We may not be using this type of damping mechanism, okay. So, anyway, if you just see, I have already told you. What is the superior type of damping system? That is eddy current damping mechanism. Okay, so eddy current damping is a superior type of damping. Okay, so after that, fluid friction damping. Okay, so fluid friction damping. After that, we have air friction damping. This is the order. Okay, so order means superiority. Okay. This is the most effective type of damping and the next one is air friction damping, okay. So, this is PMMC type of instrument which is having a permanent magnet, okay. So, in PMMC, so we have permanent magnet and remember one thing, wherever we have permanent magnetic field and wherever we have constant magnetic field, a continuous magnetic field, then we can use a D current damping mechanism, okay. So, in PMMC type of instrument also, we have strong and permanent magnetic field. So, we have to use this a D current damping mechanism, okay. And that is the most superior type of instrument, okay. And you see, PMMC type of instrument, we are using a D current damping, right. In moving iron, air friction damping mechanism we are using, okay. And in dynamometer type of instrument, we are using air friction damping mechanism only, okay. But in PMMC type of instrument, 
we are using an eddy current damping mechanism okay so that is what we have to remember okay so in the next question which of the following instruments can be used only for ac measurements you observe okay i have not discussed this one in the question in the, in the subject because some of the concepts we will learn here also okay so remember uh, we are not skipping any topic okay so everything we will, we will be discussing but some concepts like this okay you will get from the questions only okay so if even if i am not teaching this also if you do the previous year question you will be understanding this okay so like this remember one thing previous year bits okay so those are not directly taken from the textbook they will prepare okay so they will prepare the questions and give you so that time okay so whatever whatever good questions we have those are all will be there in that year okay so that's why if you solve the previous year questions all good questions and uh, all whatever standard questions you will be getting okay so those are very important for us okay all previous year questions this is also previous year question only okay so remember so pmmc type of instrument we cannot use for ac that we know okay so let's consider pmmc we can be used as only for dc okay so only dc i'm just writing only dc can we use as voltmeter we can you definitely use as voltmeter and we can use as ammeter we have already discussed this okay and the moving iron type of instrument can be used for both ac and dc okay so both ac and dc can we use as voltmeter or ammeter we can use as both voltmeter and ammeter okay and the dynamometer type of instrument can be used for both ac and dc okay both ac and dc can be used as voltmeter ammeter wattmeter and power factor meter so these are all okay so these all types of meters we can just design by using dynamometer type of instrument but the power factor meter we have not studied in our subject okay so remember there is power factor instrument power factor measurement also is possible using this dynamometer type of instrument but we have don't have in our syllabus okay and induction type okay so this is used only for ac okay only for ac okay so we can use as voltmeter or ammeter or wattmeter okay so and even power factor meter also possible energy meter also possible okay so power factor meter these are all induction type okay so energy meter watt meter power factor meter these are all present now okay so generally used ones are uh, watt meter energy meter and power factor meter only so this volt meter and ammeters even though we can design we will not be using those okay so remember these are all analysis see they have asked only one thing okay which of the following instruments can be used only for ac measurements only for ac measurements what instrument can be used you can directly know okay i can tell you induction type remember this answer okay but we are not like that okay we have to know more about those okay this is all revision you will be getting they may ask dynamometer type of instrument can be designed as ammeter voltmeter wattmeter power factor meter so these all bits we will we can be getting okay so and we know pmmc is used only for dc moving iron type of instrument used for both ac and dc dynamometer type of instrument can be used for both ac and dc and these are all other concepts that we can understand from previous bits okay whenever you are studying previous year bits when you are practicing previous year bits so do like this only okay so directly don't remember this answer directly you may get analysis there is no problem extension okay so like from that question what other models they can give like that okay so that we need to understand okay so like answer for this question is induction type of instrument okay so in induction type of instrument so dc measurements are not possible because induction principle okay so induction type of instrument works on induction principle induction is possible only with ac not with dc currents and dc voltages okay so that's why induction type of instrument can be used only for ac measurement not for dc measurement okay so like this we need to understand okay and the next question is aluminum is used for making pointers of measuring instruments because it is so they were just asking aluminum we are using right for the indicating type of instruments you observe okay so this pointer we are making with aluminum okay so or any lightweight material we can use okay you can get the answer now 
because uh, why we are using this uh, why we are using this as the aluminum means so aluminum is having uh, less weight when compared to other materials what we can use here so as the pointers okay so that we are using because it is lighter in weight okay so aluminum is not cheaper it is costly when compared to copper okay but even though we are using uh, aluminum here because weight is less for aluminum here okay so it's not magnetic material anyway so we cannot comment on this one okay and uh, it is good conductor aluminum is a good conductor that's why in power transmission lines we are using aluminum conductors only okay so the in power tra power transmission lines we are using acsr conductors acsr mean aluminum conductors with steel reinforcement okay so anyway we will study about acsr conductors later in our transmission distribution concepts in power systems actually so at that time i will explain okay so these are all standard conductors inside one steel conductor will be there outside all are aluminum type of conductors okay so like that is standard conductors aluminum conductors with steel reinforcement okay uh, why we are using steel inside why we are using the strands everything we will understand in power system concepts later okay so anyway aluminum is a conductor only but here in measuring instruments why we are using aluminum means because it is lighter in weight what is the advantage if, if the weight of the moving system is less means because the torque to weight ratio it will be more okay so torque to weight if the weight is more this ratio will be very very less then automatically sensitivity of the instrument will be less for us okay so to improve the sensitivity torque to weight ratio must be high so weight must be low here okay weight must be low means we have to use low weight material here because lighter in weight material is aluminium so that we will use here okay so then torque to weight ratio is more even for the small change in input also there will be high change in output okay so that means sensitivity is high for us you can understand like that okay so that concept i have already explained in pmmc type of instrument in the errors okay error concept of pmmc type of instrument we have already discussed that okay so in the next one the power of three phase three wire balancer system was measured by two watt meter method the reading of one of the watt meter was found zero the power factor of the system is okay so we have discussed about this thing already cases case one case two case three case four we have discussed in two watt meter method anyway i will just tell you okay so the watt meter readings in two watt meter method are w1 and w2 readings are w1 is nothing but okay so vi cos phi okay so vi cos 30 minus 5 it is okay so vl il cos 30 minus 5 that is the first watt meter reading and second watt meter reading is vi cos 30 plus 5 it is okay so first one is 30 minus 5 second one is 30 plus 5 we have anyway one of the watt meter reads zero means which watt meter can be zero here so generally to get zero the total angle okay so vi into cos of this angle must be equal to 90 30 minus 5 it is never it, it gonna become 90 because power factor angle is from 0 to 90 it is okay so power factor angle phi generally it is between 0 to 90 only more than 90 it is not possible okay so because maximum is 90 power factor angle minimum is 0 only so if you substitute any value here between 0 to 90 it can be 90 degree something less only you will get okay and anyway this can be 90 then only you will get the reading okay otherwise no need of all this analysis one of the watt meter reading is zero means generally we have already seen first watt meter reading never be zero and second watt meter okay so this watt meter reading only equal to zero okay we will also make this watt meter reading only equal to zero okay so when it is zero so v i can be zero because there is some load then only okay so if v is v r i equal to zero then wo, both watt meter readings will get as zero okay but here they told only one watt meter reading as zero okay so we will make as zero then cos 30 plus 5 equal to zero definitely so then it will be 30 plus 5 30 plus 5 is equal to 90 degree and phi equal to 90 minus 30 okay so 90 minus 30 so that will be equal to 60 degree okay so then power factor angle phi equal to 60 degree then what is the power factor so power factor we can understand as cos phi okay so cos phi 
that will be equal to cos 60 what is cos 60 value so that, that is cos 60 is nothing but 1 by 2 1 by 2 is nothing but 0 0.5 for us okay like this we can answer or we have some other method also okay so like a power factor angle formula we have directly like a power factor angle phi equal to okay so that is cos inverse okay so cos not cos inverse the tan inverse formula okay so power factor angle phi equal to tan inverse of root 3 into w1 minus w2 divided by w1 plus w2 okay so this is the formula we have so anyway one of the watt meter reading is 0 means w2 will make as 0 so then you can get as tan inverse of root 3 into w1 minus 0 divided by w1 plus 0 it is w1 w1 will be cancelled tan inverse of root 3 tan inverse of root 3 is nothing but 60 degree so power factor angle phi equal to 60 then power factor is nothing but 0 0.5 it is okay so generally they have not mentioned this is star connected load or delta connected load okay so directly you see this system they have not mentioned whether that is star or delta we can use for star or we can use for delta anything okay they just mentioned it is balance three phase three wire okay star or delta they have not given we can use two watt meter method for star or even for delta also okay so that's how power factor is equal to 0 0.5 answer for this question is d for us okay and the next question is for controlling the vibration of the disc of ic energy meter damping torque is produced by okay so for controlling the vibration in the disc of aluminum and aluminum disc of an energy energy meter damping torque is produced by okay so you can understand even in aluminum disc of energy meter so some vibrations will be there so there is some torque we can understand deflection okay so like rotation of the aluminum disc is possible with some torque only and we are providing some brake magnet to to decrease the speed so there will be some vibration okay so that is possible very very less vibration only so and to reduce that vibration so some damping torque is required okay so i have not explained this one there okay because you will confuse those concepts there why we have to provide the damping torque over there like that okay so uh, this simple reason okay so there may be some vibrations in that so that's uh, that vibrations also we have to decrease because energy meter right okay so whatever if it will rotate one or two revolutions more also then we have to pay that bill okay so that's why energy meter there must be no errors in that okay so that's why so what is the superior type of damping mechanism that type of damping mechanism we have to use in energy meters remember this eddy current damping mechanism only we are using in energy meters okay so that is eddy current damping will be provided okay so in the energy meter also why we are providing here eddy current damping that is the superior type of damping so we can get very less possibility of errors like that okay and the chemical effect we are not using electrostatic effect is very costly and in these instruments electrostatic effect is even more costly that's why we will not provide this okay and magnetic effect we are not using here okay so that is what answer first okay eddy current damping mechanism okay next question which of the following bridges bridge will be used for very low value of resistance measurement okay for resistance measurement that to very low value of resistance measurement which bridge will be used okay we can get the answer directly i told you in the subject the names of these bridges are very important all the names i will just tell you you just think whether you know the bridge why it will be used or not okay maxwell's bridge maxwell's inductance bridge maxwell's inductance capacitance bridge Hayes bridge, Owens bridge, Anderson's bridge, DSRT bridge. Okay, think okay whether you know whether these bridges are using or not. Okay, so DSRT bridge and Shearing's bridge, Wien's bridge. Okay, Heaviside bridge, Campbell's bridge, Campbell's Heaviside bridge. These are all the bridges. Okay, and we have Kelvin's double bridge, Wheatstone bridge potentiometer method okay ohm meter shunt ohm meter and series ohm meter okay ammeter voltmeter method voltmeter ammeter method substitution method okay direct deflection method and we have our loss of charge method 
Megger method. Okay, so these are all the things. Names very important. Why the, why these methods are using? For what we have this? Okay, like one bridge will be used for what? Like that. Okay. Remember. Anyway, we we will be getting all those names here again. Okay. So in the questions only, we will be getting all the types of bridges again. Okay. Remember for the very low value of resistance measurement, what bridge will be using? That is. Kelvin's double bridge. Okay, so this we are using. Okay, and Maxwell's bridge we are using for the medium inductance measurement. We know already medium inductance measurement or medium Q factor measurement. Wheatstone bridge will be using for the medium resistance measurement. Okay, so medium resistance measurement, Wheatstone bridge will be using, and for the Hayes bridge, why it will be used for high inductance measurement or High resistance measurement, uh, not resistance. High Hayes bridge will be used for high inductance measurement or high Q factor measurement. Okay, so these are the bits we have to remember. Okay, so Kelvin's double bridge we are using for the low value of resistance measurement. Okay, so these are all the bits we need to understand. Okay, so anyway, from this session we have understood this many questions and this many concepts with some revision. And in our next session also, we'll see some more previous year questions with some more conceptual questions also. Okay, thank you so much.